These are not equal lows. This is a liquidity run. Very discreet liquidity run, but it is a liquidity run. So that's why these are not equal lows. This is why this is a valid last selling volume because this is the end of this pullback. We stopped higher high demand. That's exactly why we stopped right there. Guys, this is not hard. It just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of experience to train your eyes to see this. And you have to be patient. If you put together a good trading plan, and I can even provide that for you. I have mine. I have a trading plan that you can follow. It goes over all this stuff and more. If you can stick to a trading plan, maintain your discipline and emotions, because that's the biggest hurdle for traders, this can be a very, very relatively easy business for you. You're not going to win every trade. You're not going to always be perfect. But at the end of the day, over a long period of time, you're going to be profitable. What's going on, fellow traders? Hope you guys are doing really well on this beautiful weekend. Welcome back to another pre-market analysis video with the Aerial FX team. Uh, as always, we will be highlighting the pairs that we see setups on and not discussing those that we do not see setups on. Not every single week will we have a setup on every single pair. So that's why I highlight the ones in red. So this is actually going to be a relatively short video, going to be clear and concise. I'm going to go over just a few pairs that I have some conviction on. Uh, I'm going to first start off by talking about the US dollar. Uh, we've been talking about this for quite some time now. Um, but before we get into this, you know, here at Aerial Effects, we try to make smart money concepts as simple as possible. So if you do enjoy this video and it resonates with you, feel free to head over to my website, aerialeffectstrading.com. Just book a free call with me. I'd love to talk to you about your trading journey, how we can best assist you along that journey. And if we can, we'd love to have you on board. But if not, no worries. I will even give you my trading plan absolutely for free that I personally use on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis just for booking a call. Our sponsor, Blue Guardian, is the only prop firm that gives their traders a tool to protect them from hitting their max daily loss and over trading. It's super simple to use. Just set the Guardian protector each day from your dashboard. Did you also know that they've just released an unlimited time evaluation with a zero trading days requirement, giving you plenty of time to hit their low 8 and 4% targets, making it super fast to get funded. Plus, it's cheaper than the 40 day time limit evaluation. Check out the link and coupon in the description to get 10% off your next Blue Guardian evaluation. All right, guys. So let's first start off by talking about the US dollar. Again, Again, if you've been watching the previous pre-market analysis videos, you would know that we are absolutely bullish on the dollar until we hit this 13253 level. Um, this is the US dollar, not the DXY. I like this a lot better for some reason. Um, I just I just do. Uh, hard to explain, but anyways, you know, 13253 level, this is the huge imbalance, last up thrust before that down move. Not to say that we're gonna react and go short, but that's pretty much going to be our take profit, if you will, for any long. So looking for XXX USD shorts. So we're going to continue to look to sell those pairs or buy the dollar into that supply. So continuing here, we're going to only discuss about $2 pairs. You know, of course, you know, we're just not going to talk about all the other ones because I just don't have setups on. Uh, a lot of the other pairs have been chopping around this past week. Uh, haven't really presented many setups. Um, but of course, you know, that's the reason why we only have the ones highlighted in red here, because these are the ones that I have some conviction on uh, for continuations with some good setups. So let's start off by talking about your AUD. Uh, we mentioned this area of demand just following the structure, right? We're looking for continuations to the upside. We can see we came into that repricing event, that last selling volume before the higher high. We came back down, mitigated that higher high again, last selling volumes in here or this general region, came back down to the T, higher high again, last selling volume, imbalance, came back down a little bit further. We can see we did not hit that stop loss. So it was a really good trade, took some partials. Um, I am break even on this. I did get hit out break even on um, this morning during London session, uh, but not to worry. You know, we could have seen some follow through. We did not. We stopped. Um, but at the same time, we did not make a lower low yet. So we are still reacting. I would like to see further upside on this. So looking for buy setups. Just want to see a little more confluence. But overall, um, Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar are still weak across the board. I know we saw some Aussie strength and New Zealand dollar strength. We had a rally today. Um, that's typical for the end of the week. You know, usually we get you know those overall pullbacks um, back into the overall range before the end of the week. Not to say that's going to happen every week, but that's a commonality that we like to see. Um, but anyways, I do want to see further continuations. I know the dollar was very weak today, um, but we're starting to see some more strength to end the week. And I would definitely like to see more higher time frame pushes on the dollar. Um, so when we get into GBP USD here, you know, we can see that we had a decent rally today. You know, this is more of just like an intra trend pullback. 
if we can get up a little bit higher, so if we can see some dollar weakness to start next week, I would like to be selling again at that supply zone. So we created a channel, all right? So this is a retail channel. Overall, we are in an overall downtrend, lower low, Retail one, two, three touches of that trend line. They're buying above the breakout or selling with the trend line. So either way, they're getting screwed over. Price came into that level of supply here, that up thrust before the lower low, mitigated that, distributed on a lower time frame, had a huge imbalance. We came up into our first level as discussed last week. Um, not quite up into our secondary level, um, but we're looking at making lower lows and lower highs now. We have a higher time frame objective here, down here around 1.19 or 1.1950. Uh, on the higher time frame, this is that repricing event here. We can see equal lows, and that low was swept, sell to buy, reprice, or consolidation on a lower time frame, and then we blasted off, and that's where we started the trend. This was back earlier this year. Uh, higher time frame, if we just zoom out, we can clearly see that. We came into all time lows, 1.0520 on June PUSD, made a higher high, overall pullback, higher low, higher high again. This is just a higher low. So looking to get a little bit deeper down into that huge, excuse me, imbalance. Um, so below this low here into this huge, just straight buying volume and maybe down into that level um, of demand. So looking to go a little bit lower, even 1.2 right here, we have not hit yet. So that's why I do want to see further continuation short. So any excuse to be looking to sell is definitely on the table considering we haven't reached our higher time frame objective on the US dollar. So creating that channel, we had the breakout, retail was buying, we just came into our imbalance and supply and we sold. So of course we're looking to do the opposite of what retail does because you know retail concepts don't make a lick of sense. Anyways, continuations, lower low, um, looking to pull back up into this last up thrust here, just within this huge imbalance, just, this is just straight selling volume, looking to get back up into that supply. Um, we do have a lot of uh, buy side liquidity. We can see that this is more of like a break and retest of this trend line. So if we extend that over, it was actually very nice when we broke back below it, we retested and went short. So retail is probably involved in here and their stops are right there. So I'd like to see, you know, Monday or Tuesday come around, have one more push up on uh, XXXUSD to take buy side liquidity into that supply and then continue to make that lower low into that objective point. So definitely looking for continuation short on GU. Uh, USD Swiss franc, so looking for the opposite because obviously it's an inversely correlated pair. Dollar strength is what we expect. Uh, I just like to see a little bit more of a pullback before we go long, which is exactly what we're looking for, right? So we're looking for a little bit of you know, intra day, intra week, US dollar weakness before potentially getting some more strength in the market. What I was hoping to see, and this is where we didn't push down far enough. Um, however, I still like these levels. If we do come lower, um, are these levels here? We talked about how this was resistance, this was support. We took resistance liquidity, enticing buyers above the breakout, came down, took their stops, enticing retail shorts below the support, the breakout came back up, took their stop. So that huge buy to sell to buy, it's called type two manipulation. We talked about that in our mentorship. Anyways, lower time frame. we had repricings here, here, and here. I'm not gonna go into that. If you haven't been paying attention, go back and watch the previous pre-market analysis videos. I go over this pair in very much detail. Um, so demand levels here didn't quite reach that level, but the most important thing is we swept a lot of sell side liquidity in here. All that was swept with that wick. Um, so we could easily just continue. Right, we could easily just continue long. Dollar is still strong. However, in terms of structure, I would say that this is probably structure here. Low, high, low, high, low. So we could be getting a pullback. Could we make a lower low into these levels? Yes. So I will be looking to buy from these three levels if we come lower. Right, but if we don't, then I would look to be looking to buy off of these levels of demand down here for this reason. Well. One, US dollar strong, and two, we can see the same thing that happened over here, equal highs, equal lows, buy, sell, to buy, happened right here. Equal highs, equal lows, buy to sell to buy. So really, the last selling volume took place right here before the higher high. However, you could classify this zone as the last selling volume as well. So really just anywhere in this vicinity of price, maybe around 8,950, that psychological level could be interesting. Really just looking to get an initial surge of dollar weakness to start the week, maybe next week, and then a rise up. So what this could be potentially is, you know, next week is the end of the month. So Tuesday, I believe is the first or the 31st, I think. So Wednesday would be the first. Maybe what we, that 
you know, could do is start the month with a wick, so a push down, and then we continue long. So that would create the wick on the weekly or the monthly time frame. Possibility, who knows? But I like the setup. You know, we do have, if we are to, going to continue short, we do have a lot more buy side liquidity to run. We did take that high. We haven't taken that high yet. But where's the last buying volume within this pullback here? I would say it's probably right there, that repricing right? Because that was the last doji, last buying volume before then we started the downfall in to make the lower low. So maybe back up into that level could be interesting. Right up in here, around 9050, 9040, something like that. Um, just looking for continuations long on USD Swiss franc. Anyways, NZD CAD. So what's interesting about NZD CAD, um, and I really do want to continue to long this, even though we are in a downtrend, because um, we can see clearly here, you know, we're continuing to fall, right? We're making lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high. We haven't made a lower low yet. So technically we could go like this and then like that. Why? Because this could just be a glorified overall retracement for lower low, lower high, lower low, right? We did not make a lower low here. So we can't necessarily say that, oh, this trend has shifted. Now we're going to go long. We can't say that yet really until we break this high here. Until we break that high here, we're still bearish. However, short term, we could be bullish. Um, even bullish within this current structure here, even if we were to stop and make a lower low, we're still counter trend bullish here. So let me go kind of go over that. Uh, I'm not looking for sell setups yet on a lower time frame. I'm looking for buy setups. We can see in here, this is the lower low, potential lower high for a potential lower low, right? But if we zoom in, we will see the beautiful accumulation schematic, very discreet lower lows, lower highs. We had the spring, we had the retest, we continued higher high, higher low, higher high. Okay, so this was the accumulation and here was the last selling volume that failed to generate the lower low here that ended up stopping and making the higher high and that's where we started the up thrust sequence of higher highs and higher lows. All right, so we're looking for continuations to the upside because for when we came back down deeper into this level, oftentimes, and I know it's blurry, I'm just zoomed out here, but oftentimes I say intra-structural lows and highs, meaning when we break structure, we create a low and then we come back down, take the low and then rise up again, right? Intra-structural lows still maintaining the overall higher high because this is the low overall is this is the higher high way up there. This could be the higher low and the higher time frame to make a higher high again. All this is just intrastructural liquidity, low here, low here, low here, that we could run, All right? Still maintaining our bullish structure. So we actually stopped. Uh, I wasn't anticipating that we would stop in here, but we did. We stopped within this last you know, selling volume, so area of demand. We swept that previous low, obviously, and we accumulated again. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, discrete, very slow down in price. And this is where we broke the counter trend here. This is the previous low, or excuse me, high that made that low, and then we made a higher high. So we made a higher high, but what the most important thing is, is we failed to generate the lower low and instead made a higher high again. So I would classify this as a one, two, three, looking for four and five, right? So where would that overall take profit be if I were to buy this? Well, this is where we have to zoom out. So we could easily make a higher high, right? And maybe come up deeper into, you know, supply up in here, because you can classify this as one, oops, lower low, lower high for a lower low. And this could just be, you know, an overall pullback like that, right? So maybe deeper up into that level. Or if we were to make a lower low, like this, where would we likely push up into and stop? Well, we have a huge level of imbalance right in here. What we can also see is around this 8.1 psychological level or 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, it's a very sensitive region of price. We can see we came up into that creating resistance, support, resistance, support, support, had a little bit of choppiness right here with that supply. So a lot of sensitivity is surrounding that level. So I would like for price to get back up into that zone. And in doing so, I would prefer if we had, if we came down lower first, if we came up into here and then sold off into this demand, then it'd be a little tricky because technically we would have hit the objective and it would just make the buy a little less likely. Not to say that it couldn't happen and become a little bit higher before falling. 
um, but it would just make it a little less likely. I, not to say that I wouldn't take it, I would just maybe use a little bit lower risk. However, if we come up or come down into this level first, because we can see counter trend low, high, low, high, we can see that reaction with that sell off. And then we stopped, that's the repricing, huge imbalance, just straight buying volume. And then we made the higher high above that high. So that would be the demand level in which we'd like to pull back into, would take sell side liquidity with these lows and then go long. Again, infrastructural liquidity. So I would like to see continuations long from that level. And if we do get a push down into this level first, it would just mean that this is more highly probable to work out because we haven't come up into objective and we haven't taken these highs yet. These are still equal highs. So liquidity is resting above that level. So potentially a really good setup coming for the upcoming week. Folks, Black Bull Markets have 10 merch packs to give away to clients who sign up before the end of the year, including one of these trader keys. So to go in the draw, all you need to do is sign up with the link below this video or in the podcast description, and you'll go in the draw to win. It's that simple. And remember folks, when you sign up to Black Bull Markets through the trading nut link below, you're gonna get a 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000 on your first deposit. All you need to do is click the link in the description below the video or the podcast. Similar to NZD CAD is AUD CAD. I would like to see continuation to the upside, at least short term. You know, we can see that we are above the one hour 50 EMA. We are above the four hour 50 EMA entering into these zones. So good confluence for continuations. Daily time frame, we are above the daily as well. And we can see the daily is into that zone as well. So a lot of confluence uh, popping up for the Aussie Canadian dollar and New Zealand Canadian dollar as well. Um, even though we are bearish, I want to point out the higher time frame. So let's just take a look. Let's not like go into anything crazy, like into each individual candle. I know it's blurry. Like I said, I'm just zoomed out here, but I want to show you the bigger picture. Okay. We are in a downtrend. That's clear as day. Equal highs were run with that wick. Everyone can see that wick right there. Buy side liquidity was run. Lower low was formed. Lower high was formed. Why did we stop there? Well, we came into that last buying volume. Also the imbalance in here, just straight selling right? No buying was offered. We filled that supply zone and we rallied lower. So this is the low that is, excuse me, the high that has generated this new lower low. All of this in here is just intrastructural swings, right? Lower time frame swings for a higher time frame expansion. Okay. So where are we looking to potentially long? Well, you can see how we're starting to bottom out right? We've made a lower low, we've made a lower high, and then we stopped. We did not make a lower low. And instead, we made a higher high. So now I would consider this trend low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, failed, higher high. Now I do believe we're going to be getting that overall pullback. So with that being said, where is the end of the pullback on the higher time frame? Well, where's the pullback? Well, if that was a pullback and that's a swing, that's a pullback and this is a swing. So this is the pullback right here. So where is the last buying volume? Well, let's let's look at the structure. We have a high, low, high, low, high, low, failed, lower, low. This is the last buying volume in here. We can see that we already came into it right there, but that's buy side liquidity. I would like to come deeper up into that level. So let's take a look at this last buying volume. Let's go down to the one hour time frame and zoom in. This is really cool, guys. So we can see in here that if this is the last buying volume, let's look at this lower time frame trend, right? High, low, high, and then we made a lower low. So we can see that we cleared retail liquidity, this buying, buy to sell. Yes, this is the last buying volume. Will it make it all the way up into that level? Who knows? More important thing is the imbalance really the imbalance from here to here, just straight selling volume. So anywhere between 0.89 and 0.8950, right? That's a good level, right? 0.89 and 0.8950, psychological levels. So anywhere up into that level, those levels I would be looking too long into. So we can see we have a ways to go. So again, intrastructural liquidity. I wasn't anticipating that we would stop. I was fully anticipating that we would make a lower low, but the fact that we stopped and made a higher high, now we can adapt to what the market's telling us to do and look for confluences and setups to continue to long. So right in here, this was the last selling volume. We actually stopped. Again, no one could have anticipated that because we're bearish, right? You would fully expect a lower low, making lower lows and lower highs. But the fact that we stopped, then in hindsight, I went back and drew this out. So we can see that that's the last selling volume, so demand sell side liquidity, we ran it, and then we stopped and made the higher high, okay? Now let's just continue, right? Last selling volume that failed to make the lower low within this structure, 
stopped higher high. So we came back down into that level. This low here, I want you to look at, you see these numbers right here? I want you to look at where it says low. 0.86313 is the low. I'm gonna go over here. The low right there is 0.86318. This low, this wick is lower than that. So this is these are not equal lows. This is a liquidity run. Very discreet liquidity run, but it is a liquidity run. So that's why these are not equal lows. This is why this is a valid last selling volume, right? Because this is the end of this pullback. We stopped higher high demand. That's exactly why we stopped right there. Guys, this is not hard. It just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of experience to train your eyes to see this. And you have to be patient. If you put together a good trading plan, and I can even provide that for you. I have mine. I have a trading plan that you can follow. It goes over all this stuff and more. If you can stick to a trading plan, maintain your discipline and emotions, because that's the biggest hurdle for traders, this can be a very, very rel well, relatively easy business for you. You're not going to win every trade. You're not going to always be perfect. But at the end of the day, over a long period of time, you're going to be profitable, right? You're not going to be profitable every day, every week, every month. But over the long run, if you stick to a trading plan and you follow these simple, simple rules and concepts, we're good. See, this is why we, we do so well here is because we don't complicate trading because trading does not need to be complicated. We don't need to dissect every little solitary, every single solitary candle here and look for the exact price point on the one second time frame to look for longs, right? We look for general levels, a general understanding of what the market's doing, what the market's doing in terms of structure from a higher and lower time frame perspective, what the market is doing from market manipulation, supply and demand, the overall sentiment, and we just follow that. We're not looking to get precise entries with a hundred or you know, a one to a hundred million risk to reward. That's not what we're about. If we can get a one to three or a one to four, one to five, we're happy. All right? That's all because that's all you need. That's so that way, you know, trading lower time frames, which is personally I just don't like to do, because it just you're gonna lose more than you win. It just messes with your psychology, right? So because imagine this. Imagine you, you know, you had an entry from that level, okay, and then you were looking to scale into that on a lower time frame. If you were to go, let's just give an example here. Let's go to like the two minute time frame. And you were watching this from the first initial reaction, Friday, the 20th of October, all the way to Monday, the 23rd. So for a couple hours, right? You could be watching this and you would be like, okay, we had a reaction, cool, higher high. Let's look for a higher low and a higher high again. You would you would continue to trade this. Yeah, I mean, you could find some areas of demand in here. However, when price starts to roll down, what are you gonna do with this position right here? Most people, if they're sitting in front of their computer screen for hours on end every single day, they're gonna get nervous because they're gonna see such a momentumous push here, even though this is the two minute time frame, and they're probably gonna close out of this position with being afraid that they're gonna lose. I don't care about that. I get in, I let it do its thing. I don't care about all the noise in here, right? That's why I like to try intraday, intra week, relatively higher time frame, because I just get my general zones and I let it go. If I win, great. If I lose, whatever, you move on. So anyways, last selling volume, higher high, higher low, into that level perfectly, higher high again. We cleared that high. So where is our repricing events? Well, that's the previous supply zone, had the reaction here, failed to make the lower low, higher high, so that's demand right there. We also had a mini consolidation block right there. So anywhere in these levels, I will be looking for continuations into that overall objective up into eight, nine. So this is how I break down charts, and it's really not hard, it just takes a little practice, as I said. All right, two more, AUD, NZD. Uh, AUD, NZD, we can see the theme right now. You know, Aussie Chef, we're looking to long. AUD, NZD, we're looking to long. Um, so potential continuations long on Aussie dollar for the time being. However, overall in the higher time frame, we're bearish on Aussie dollar, and that's clear. Um, I just mentioned that before. That's why we're only looking for short-term longs on like ACAD and stuff like that and NCAD. Um, but anyways, AUD, NZD uh, had a beautiful area of demand down here. We talked about this plenty of times. Retail trend line, one, two, three touches, break and retest, retail goes short, we go long. Trade of the year, phenomenal. Uh, looking for continuations. I even called that out. I even said trade of the year when this was 
about to happen months and months and months ago, earlier this year. Huge imbalance as a result. Inside demand. If you guys don't understand this terminology, you guys got to hop on this course. I'm telling you, you got to understand it to be able to trade it. And it's not difficult, right? Got to invest in yourself or you're never going to get anywhere. I promise. You're not willing to spend money to invest in yourself. I mean, keep trying by yourself. It's just not going to really get you anywhere. Anyways, imbalance, sell side liquidity, infrastructural liquidity. We came down into that level, took sell side into that demand accumulation. One hour time frame accumulation, discrete lower lows, lower highs, starting to shift to the upside. Let's see if there was any price volume divergence. Um, I mean, there is as a, there's a little bit. We can see price is still falling. The volume is still rising here. Not much. That's okay. You know, it's just used as a confluence. We don't really need it, to be honest. Um, but, you know, if it was there, that'd be great. Anyways, we finally exploded here. And that's where we started to trickle. So we could follow the trickle, right? Because we're still bullish, right? We could just continue to trade high, low, high, low, high, low, high, and just continue like that. Or we get an overall retracement into that huge imbalance and look at this as more of a higher high, higher low, higher high, All right? So that's why we always trade with the lower time frame first until it breaks, and then we zoom out. If we're still bullish on the higher time frame, then we look to long it again upon an overall retracement to make a higher high. But if we're, I mean, obviously we are bullish. But if we were bearish, then this would be, let's just say, a lower low, lower high. Then if we broke, then we were, then we'd be looking for pullbacks to then short to make a lower low, right down there. But we're not. We're bullish. So we look for overall pullbacks to go long. Anyways, objective. Well, we have a lot of buy side liquidity. This high here did not take out that high, which did not take out that high. Where we have tons of buy side liquidity, still looking to buy this. If we were to go short, which I just don't think we will because we're making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, looking for a higher high. But if we were to go short, then that would be the last sell, uh, buying volume with that supply zone just in case this were to be low, high, low. I just don't think that's the case just based upon everything else to the left. But again, I've already went over that plenty of times before in prior videos. Then that's just where we'd look to take par uh, partials, right? So around that 1.0970, 1.1, that could be a level. Overall take profits. Um, overall take profits are going to be a higher high just because, you know, higher time frame. this is a demand, higher high, higher low, We're looking for a higher high. But let's just say we were to go short like this, right? Because you always have to look at the opposite to be able to look at your partials or your take profits, right? It's this supply here, that last buying volume here before the lower low, okay? So partials here, partials here, overall take profit somewhere up there, just at least to make a higher high, okay? Um, so we have our higher time frame imbalance zone down here. So that's a region that may not hit this week, next week, or in a month, or in two months, or even ever, who knows? But if we do break and come down here, I'll be looking to buy. But for the short term, I'm looking to continue to buy with this current trend. So we can see higher high, a little bit of consolidation, higher high again, pull back into that selling volume for a higher high. And then we broke this structure here. So that's the last selling volume there that failed to make the lower low. We made a higher high. So I'd like to pull back into that level to look for longs. Obviously, if we break, then that will be a good level for longs again. Same take profits. Okay, so that's AUD NZD. Last one, AUD Swiss franc. Well, looking for longs at least short term on Aussie dollar. So with AUD Swiss franc, we can clearly see that we're bearish. We're making lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low. However, I would say that this, these are equal highs, and relatively these are equal highs as well. Okay, so I would like to see buy side liquidity run at least these highs here. Maybe not that these highs, but at least these highs. You know, we can see we just missed that previous high. So we'd like to see, you know, at least one more drive and classify this as a one drive, two drive, potential third drive for an A into B into C, maybe something like that. Um, I don't know why I have that green line there. Just ignore it. Anyways, have a lot of imbalance in here to straight selling volume. So we could sweep these equal highs, come up into that last buying volume here, fill up some imbalance, right? So that could be a take profit or we come a little bit higher and take these equal highs out and so, something like that, right? So short-term longs, right? That's what I'm looking for. So you can see in here, we have a high, we failed to make the lower low and instead we made a higher high again. 
sw swept intrastructural low. That low is run. Higher high. Last selling volume was right here. That failed to make the lower low and said we made the higher high, so that's demand. Also, this one hour 50 EMA confluence for continuations. Uh, I'll see if about four hour yet, four hour 50 EMA as well. So good confluence to be looking to long a chef um, similar to AN and um, AD CAD and NZD CAD. So maybe some short term Aussie strength could be in effect. Um, pre that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't have much else on all the pairs. Obviously, if those of you who are in our signals group or VIP group, you guys are going to be getting day to day analysis and signals and trade ideas and everything throughout the week. So you don't have to worry about not receiving, um, you know, stuff throughout the week. But obviously, guys, if you're not in the overall mentorship group, I can only give what I can give once a week through these pre-market analysis videos. So if you want updates throughout the week, if you want to trade alongside us, feel free to head over to my website, arielfxtrading.com and just book a free call. It's free. We'd love to chat with you for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, see how we can best help you. Uh, and if we can, we'd love to have you on board. And if not, no worries. I will even provide my trading plan for free. So anyways, guys, have a great weekend and happy trading come next week. Take care. Tired of missing trades or spending hours at the charts? Introducing my Robot Builders Club. With our platform, you can build bots in minutes, not weeks, without any coding required. Get lifetime access to my video course, VIP community, and over 40 ready-made robots. Works with MT4 or MT5, and as a bonus, you'll get three months access to my robot lab, where we build and test bots on live calls every week. Join the hundreds of traders who are trading smarter, not harder. Click the link in the description to learn more, get the free training, and download a free robot.